Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my interpretation of the four elements tag. This was one that was created by the top note here on YouTube and I've seen a whole bunch of people do their own versions. I was actually watching Beauty Mao's video today on it so I decided to do my own and we're gonna get straight into it. Uh, basically you just pick some fragrances that match each of the four elements and you explain why they're kind of suited to that element for you. And I've been talking to a, a lot of you, to all of you who follow me on Instagram, if you don't follow, definitely do, about how I pre-filmed like I usually do a bunch of videos, but then I got my hair done and I went back to brunette, which I'm actually surprising re really liking. And so this is I think the first video that you'll see back with, um, well, here with my new hair, but if you've been on Instagram then you kind of saw it ahead of time and ha you, we just talk a lot more um, kind of the days in between when I'm uploading because I uplo upload like every other day. Um, so yeah, definitely follow me on there. We can talk all things fragrance and you know beauty and hair whenever they come up and we will get straight into it. So I actually had a really really great time picking out these fragrances. I felt like for pretty much all the signs I had so many more ideas than I needed to do. And I've seen some people do niche, like one niche, one designer, um, high end, low end. And I kind of just picked the fragrances, two fragrances per element that the most matched that element for me. For water, I will say there's an honorable mention only because one of the fragrances that I think incredibly encapsulates water is a fragrance I don't like at all. I very much dislike it but it matches water so, so well, so it's an honorable mention. But yeah, let's get into it. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe, and we're gonna start with air. So I'm an air sign, so I actually was really intrigued by my own choice of what these were gonna be, and I think both of them are different takes on air because that's the most subjective one of the, th of the four, I think. Um, and this one's Bulgari Aqua Divina, and it's the Eau de Toilette. I've got this immediately was the first one that came to mind for air. And I think it's out of the two, the most authentically air. And it's a very airy fragrance, but it's particular. It's, it's aquatic in that it's very, very salty sea air. That's what it smells like. It smells like sea water, sea air, but it's not aquatic in the way that we're gonna get into the watery or the water element fragrances. It's not an aquatic floral. It's very much not sweet. It's not even particularly wet as in you're smelling the ocean. It's as if you're smelling kind of like the mist, the sea breeze, sea air. It's incredibly salty, the most salty fragrance easily, um, without a doubt in my collection and honestly, one of the most salty fragrances I've ever smelled in my entire life. And I feel like it does best when sprayed on very, very clean skin, clean clothing that, I mean, obviously, hopefully you guys are clean all the time, but you guys, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it does the best because it's a very pure, airy, salty fragrance that really isn't especially like grounded in like deep, rich, spicy notes, and it's not in any way sweet at all. It's very pure to what it is. I think it does just best sprayed very, very clean. I feel like in the summertime, especially when I would just leave my hair wet in like a ponytail and would head out, um, this, would, this would be a really nice one to wear. I haven't had the chance to wear it like in a beachy, very tropical location yet because I picked it up this year and we're not really traveling obviously, but this is one I definitely like to try out in that kind of environment because I think that would also be an area in which it blooms. So that very much came to mind when I was thinking of air. And the second one, I decided to go with a little bit more wearable and safer of an option. This is airy, but it's a floral airy. And this is from the Insolence range, which is one of my top three, if not my favorite range of all time. And this is Insolence Eau Glacée, which is discontinued, but you can still find it from time to time. Um, and I was really happy to have picked it up. 
This is kind of a lighter, if you're familiar with Insolence Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum, this is definitely a much waterier, airier, brighter, citrusy, and extremely lighter version of that fragrance. It has been watered down, which sounds like it's a bad thing, but I really love the way that this was actually lightened up because the Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum, you guys can watch my video on Insolence, I compared the four that I have in that range. The, yeah, I, I feel like the Eau de Toilette didn't really in any way lessen it the way you would think it would have been if you're comparing an Eau de Toilette to an Eau de Parfum, but this is what this did. And there's something about how, I just want to spray this one actually. I don't know, there's just something about how this, fragrance wears on the skin that makes me think of it's it's definitely got that candied violet ness but maybe the citrusy ness in the opening and the overall airiness of this fragrance smells as if you're not smelling the candied violet candies or just like the candied violets themselves straight off you know like a tray or as potpourri or even like if you're smelling the fragrance in and of itself, even when you first spray it, it's light as if you're smelling it in the air, as if someone had sprayed or ha like made candied violets in their bedroom or in their kitchen and you were just walking and you're catching like wafts of it and maybe there's like a sprinkle of bergamot or lemon in there that keeps it a little bit fresher. It just smells like floral citrus air. If that makes any sense it makes sense to me and if you smell this I'm sure it'll make closer sense to you but it's it's really beautiful and I don't know what it is but this is one that I genuinely would recommend wearing a lot more in you know hotter weather if you're gonna have a bunch of insolence if you have like the eau de parfum and this this does a lot better in hot weather when you want something lighter and fresher and not you know cloying in any way but i have been so drawn to it in the past two weeks when things are getting colder and very fall vibes and there's no explanation for it there's really no worries either because we're mostly spending time indoors anyways but i just have really really fallen in love with this all over again and i think it makes a beautiful fragrance for air and just like encapsulating floral air and what that means to me all right, so now we move on to water. And for me, I'm gonna start with the two, as I mentioned, that I actually really, really love. And the first one, again, I knew straight off the bat, water, it had to be, and some of you will probably guess this as well, CK2 by Calvin Klein. This is, to date, the most water-smelling fragrance I have ever come across. It smells very much like um, and I think I always get this wrong. I think it's called like petrichor is what it's officially called, but it's basically like the smell of rain, um, which I adore the smell of rain on like asphalt or cobblestone. And this smells like that. It, it even in its notes or in the note description was said to try to convey the smell of like rain on cobblestones and wet cobblestones. And it's such a tall glass of water. And this is one when the first time I bought it and wore it blind by, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I'll have to play around with it, thinking I was not going to love it. And from the second time I wore it onwards, and it has remained since I started my channel, because this I hauled near the beginning of my channel, it has remained incredible ever since. And I've never bought a backup, even though I know that it's discontinued and it kind of is found and not found in waves and there was a whole period over the summer where I was like seeing it everywhere but I didn't buy a backup which I'm proud of myself of because I don't need any more but this is an incredible fragrance by Calvin Klein I think it is so unique so incredibly water like and yet not the way not aquatic in the way that I hate sometimes lotus can feel can smell murky or it, it just doesn't get murky on the skin which aquatic fragrances can sometimes do and that is what I like to avoid at every cost when getting you know watery or aquatic fragrances and this is just like water it's not aquatic in any other way other than smelling like water and rain 
and slightly herbal but not very green I just I really really love it so that's CK2 that one I knew straight off the bat the second one again is a very interesting interpretation of water and it's the ritual of hammam and hammam in many languages means shower or bath and this is by rituals and it essentially is with rosemary and eucalyptus trying to convey the smell of like Turkish baths and Middle Eastern bath houses where you would be, you know, covered in oils and massaged and be in these like communal baths that a lot of countries actually have. And it's very, again, very herbal, but much more of a noticeably, like you're getting a lot of rosemary, eucalyptus, even kind of spearminty. And it smells, it smells like Turkish baths. It smells like Middle Eastern bath houses and a lot of like rich essential oils. It doesn't smell watery in any type of like beachy, seaside, seawatery kind of way, but it very much conveys the like an evocation of water because of those like shower bath fragrances. And I really, really do love this one. This is a beautiful one to wear post shower if you want a fragrance just to wear and spray on yourself quickly after a shower. It's a body mist. All of these uh, body mists from Rituals I actually think have really good like a substantial amount of lasting power uh, around on your skin for being a body mist and they're really just interesting and nice to wear. I wear this often after showers honestly and I really really do like it. And the last one for water is the one I mentioned that it's not my favorite at all. I actually actively don't wear this but it's undeniable that it's an extremely water centric fragrance and this is by Comptoir Sud Pacifique and it's Eau des Lagons. This is also an eau de toilette. This is very aquatic. It also smells like sea... Lagoon is lagoon. It's very lagoon, marine, aquatic-y. Also very salty, but not as salty as the Aqua Divina. There is, I don't know, it's, it's hard to place. Personally, I feel like this isn't a fragrance that I'd like to wear. I suppose smelling it, it's all right if it were just like the smell of something, but it's so authentically smells like you've arrived at like a very natural spring or body of water that it's not something I want to smell like. I feel like if you came back from like swimming in the spring um, where your like hair kind of smells like a little murky and you know, you had a good time there, but that's not what you want to smell like day to day. That's kind of what this conveys. I don't mind because it was very inexpensive and I picked it up on a sale kind of as a risky blind buy that very obviously went wrong, but that's okay. Some people want to take a lot more risks in what they're wearing and I feel like I'm definitely risky enough, but this is just one step too far where I don't want to smell like a body of water, but it's very, very authentic to that. So that's Eau de Lagon. Then we get to fire. And for me, the first one, these were like maybe a little harder, not hard, but these were kind of more interpretations of what I saw as being fire-like because I actually don't have a lot of like burnt, I don't know, um, kind of like burnt firewood or campfire type scents like by the fireplace or by uh, Maison Martin Margiela or, or maybe I do and I just, they didn't come to mind, but I specifically didn't pick fragrances that evoked like an actual fire scent. Um, maybe because I couldn't find them in my collection, but also none were really coming to mind and I interpreted fire as being a lot more of like something that was warm and spicy and rich and had like amber and cinnamon and was like evoking of that overall element. So the first one is Noble Potion by Merchant of Venice and this I knew had to be one of them. It is it is just spicy, cinnamon. It doesn't have ginger in it, but it evokes that gingeriness. It supposedly has violet and I get none of that, but it's very like woody and spicy and it smells a bit after it's, you know, you have like the remnants and the dry down on your skin or your clothing. It smells a bit of how if you were wearing fragrance that had that was like a spicy cinnamony floral and you were drinking ginger ale but not Canada dry like pure ginger ale 
and you had like the remnants of a bonfire on you as well. I know that's very specific, but I swear that is what I get. It's It's got that like spicy, definitely cinnamon centric spiciness to it, but then you get like a zinginess that just reminds me of those little ginger ales that are quite strong and they kind of like sparkle and I don't know, open your nasal passage, I feel like. It's got an element to that and deep, deep, deep rich in there. It smells like bitter woods, um, which makes me think of like the tail end of like a bonfire. So yeah, that's very evoking of fire for me. And the second one, because it has, I don't know, because it has like very ambery, dark, again, very warm, spicy feels to it. Black Orchid is one I picked from Tom Ford. This is a very love or hate fragrance and I have days where I really really want it and other days where I'm just totally not into it but regardless of that there was something about this that is very rich and deep and again bitter and that draws me to kind of like fire and burnt wood and ambery slightly gourmand but in like a coffee dark kind of way and not in like a marshmallow candy kind of gourmand. So that is Black Orchid and that would have been my second pick for fire. And then we get to Earth and for Earth I decided again to go in two different directions. The first one I wanted to have a nude fragrance, something I mean being that it's obviously woody but it's like definitely from the earth and I wanted to go again all out and I went with L'Autre Oud. This is one of my favorite oud fragrances of all time. I've already broken it out and worn it a bunch on the super cold days. It is very strong and rich and earthy and it's not trying to make it easier to wear with rose or I don't know any particular sweetness. It's not trying to be anything other than it is and I really really like how earthy and deep and rich it is. It also makes it maybe less wearable for people who aren't who are just jumping into oud, I wouldn't say to start with l'autre oud, but this is a really beautiful, earthy, bitter oud, and I absolutely love this. And the last one is a men's fragrance that I think is unisex, and definitely some people, definitely some women um, like to wear it as well, and that's Terre d'Hermes The Eau de Toilette. This is like, this is very earthy, and green, and bitter orange in the beginning, but as it settles, it is it is like the green, earthy, vetiver, citrus, kind of bitter citrus fragrance that you would want to jump into because it is so well blended and almost magically blended. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, where after about two to five minutes, it transforms into something unbelievably de delicious. The bitter citrus in the beginning, I admit, is not my favorite. I don't hate it. It's nice, but what it turns into and how incredibly delicious it turns in about five minutes in and then throughout and the sillage you get off of that is absolutely beautiful. And I think it's a really nice take on earthiness without getting, I had some like fig fragrances that were kind of earthy and like green fragrances that got too earthy and. I don't know, this just really came to mind and there actually were some other Hermes fragrances that I could have gone with, but I decided to talk about this one. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!